folks, and welcome to the very first Rad Path Rounds. I'm Ryan, and I'm super excited to be with you. And I am joined by Kate, the founder of Cyto Schoolhouse, and we are going through our very first case together. So we are really excited for this. There are so many different ways that radiology and cytology overlap and connect in the veterinary space. And we want to start talking about some cases that are going to help us put together in clinical practice what we're seeing. And so for this very first case, we thought we would go through uh, a presentation of a one-year-old mixed breed dog who lives in Ontario, Canada, who's presenting for a one-week history of worsening cough and increasing respiratory rate and effort. This patient also has concurrent uveitis. And so because of that increasing respirate and effort, we took radiographs as part of the baseline diagnostic for this patient. So these are those radiographs. On our left-hand side of the screen, we've got a dorsoventral projection here, and we've got our left lateral projection here. But of course, no set of thoracic radiographs is complete without that beautiful right lateral projection. So we've got complete three-view thoracic radiographs, which is ever so important. So when we're looking at our thorax, it's always important to take a systematic approach and look at everything. But I really want to focus in on the lungs today because that's where the problem is. And that is what we're going to be looking at from a cytology perspective as well. So when we look at these lungs, this is a really classic example of having a mixed pulmonary pattern, which to me is one of the most challenging pulmonary patterns because there's lots of different things going on that you have to put together. So the first thing that I'm noticing is the most uh, the largest increase in opacity, which is in the right cranial thorax. In this right cranial thorax, we have this uniform soft tissue opacity that has an air bronchogram here. And so this is evidence of an alveolar pattern. That is the hallmark of an alveolar pattern, an increase in soft tissue opacity, completely obscuring vessel margins and creating air bronchogram. So we've got our alveolar pattern in our right cranial. We also have throughout the thorax, and it's really nicely visible, especially in the collar dorsal thorax here, these numerous, small, almost punctate-like nodules, which we could sometimes call a miliary pattern. So this is where the pattern of the lungs looks like millet seeds, and this fine nodular pattern is often implicated in a couple specific diseases that we'll get to soon. So we've got this miliary pattern as well, and then we have portions of the lung which just have this hazy increase in opacity, especially here in the left caudal thorax, which obscures vessel margins, as well as has increases in opacity along the airways themselves. So we have basically a component of every different pulmonary pattern in this one patient, and that makes it kind of challenging. It makes it challenging to be able to identify all those pieces and put them together, but once we do notice them, it can really help us narrow our differential diagnosis list. So small nodules, diffuse bronchointerstitial, and alveolar, our main differentials for this is fungal pneumonia, and then lymphoma as well would be the cancerous uh, differential that would help uh, or that would present with similar radiographic features. So what's going to help us get to the answer is, of course, cytology, and that is where Kate is going to come in with an example of some cyto. Okay, so these are some cytology photos from a representative lung aspirate. And here at this lower objective view, it's a little tough to see all the cells when we're this far back, so we're gonna get closer. But the first thing I want you to notice is that it's super, super cellular. Lung aspirates are typically not very cellular because the lungs are filled with air. And so already we are noticing that there's abnormalities here and that there are so many cells all over the place. And once we get closer, you'll be able to see this a bit better, but there are a lot of inflammatory cells in here. So there are these big groups of just tons of inflammatory cells, which are mostly neutrophils with some macrophages in there as well. And again, next slide, we're gonna get closer, but I do want you to notice that there are all the streaming material as well that you'll notice in several of, of these photos. And those are lysed cells. So those cells have ruptured and all of that content is just the nuclear debris. So you got to ignore it. 
And when we're getting a little bit closer so that we can see all the cell morphology a bit better, first of all, again, ignore all of this streaming purple blown up cellular material. All of that is just nuclear debris. But you can see, again, all of these inflammatory cells all over the place, which are mostly neutrophils. And we've also got some macrophages stuck in there as well, but primarily neutrophils all over. And then what you might notice, hopefully, right there in the center, there's a really dark blue blob. And we really want to see that closer to see what that might be. Um, one piece of advice, uh, when you're looking at cytology, especially if you're concerned about fungal organisms, it's nice to do a lower power scan and see if you can find dark blue blobs that you can then get closer to, to see if it's anything important like fungal organisms. And if not, you can back up and keep moving, but it's a nice way to be able to spot things from up above. So here we are closer to this. And as you can see, this is a fungal yeast. This is a uh, basophilic structure that is budding. And it's, so it's exhibiting broad-based budding, mean it's, meaning it's budding at, with a broad base. And it's got a double contoured refractile cell wall. And you'll notice that all of the cells behind it are out of focus. And that's because this is a 3D structure and it is very refractile. So when you focus in and out, it kind of shines at you and comes in and out of focus from the background. But this here is diagnostic in this case. And what we are dealing with is blastomycosis. So this is blastomyces dermatitidis. This organism will cause marked neutrophilic and macrophagic inflammation, also referred to as pyogranulomatous inflammation. And that's a classic inflammatory pattern for this fungal organism. And um, we'll see some of these things that I pointed out already, just as far as morphology, double contoured refractile cell wall. They are basophilic, which means blue, and they're round, and they exhibit that broad base budding. <clears throat> so all of these things on cytology allow us to make that diagnosis of blastomycosis, which really correlates with what we were seeing on the radiographs. So a few things about blastomycosis as we're wrapping this interesting case up. Blastomycosis is a dimorphic fungal infection, which means that it lives in different forms in the environment versus in the animal. So what happens is the animal inhales the environmental form, it transforms to the yeast form once it's at body temperature, and then it can travel to all over the body. So it sets up in the lungs, but then it goes to things like the bone, skin, lymph nodes, et cetera. It can go anywhere. And it does cause, as you saw, this severe inflammatory response. And it can be diagnosed on cytology, but sometimes we're not gonna get lucky and see the fungal organisms. So there is a urine antigen test that is really helpful for diagnosis of blasto as well. Oh, that was awesome, Kate. Thank you so much for that. It was so cool to see all those inflammatory cells and it really helps me wrap my mind around what I'm seeing radiographically. I get all that kind of infiltrate in the lungs that I'm seeing as the increase in opacity. And then you pull up those slides with those beautiful, massive amounts of inflammatory cells. That was awesome to see. Thanks for that. Yeah. It's really neat for me to be able to correlate clinically what I'm seeing under the microscope and see what you guys are seeing out there on imaging. So that was very neat to be able to see as well. Cool. Well, this was a lot of fun. We hope that all of you enjoyed it. Uh, and hopefully we'll get back at you with some more cases in the future. So thanks for uh, tuning into this first round of Rad Path Rounds, and we'll, uh, we'll see you next time. Thanks, guys. Bye.